Shalom to all the listeners. My name is Chris Dikumana. I'm the host of the Kanguka Broadcast. Today is Monday and I would like to remind our new listeners that Kanguka is a Kirundi word, the language of Burundi, and it means wake up. If you're listening to the broadcast through the radio or if you're receiving them via WhatsApp, please be aware that you can access all the broadcasts at any time by visiting the Kanguka website, kanguka.com, or by visiting the Kanguka English channel on YouTube or by downloading the Kanguka mobile app on your phone. Just type Kanguka. That's K A N G U K A. I would like to send my greetings to all the listeners around the world. And as usual on Mondays, I would like to thank all the people who pray for us. May I am bless every person who takes time to pray for the Kanguka team. We really need your prayers. And when you pray for us, don't forget to also pray for the partners of Kanguka who support this ministry. This ministry needs the prayers of the children of God. It's thanks to your prayers that we are where we are today. So whenever you pray, please remember. Remember to pray for us and for the partners of Kanguka. And may all the glory be to I am. As a reminder, I often use the name I am in this broadcast because it's the name of God revealed by God himself. You can read about it in Exodus chapter 3 verse 14. As usual on Mondays, I like to remind you about the guiding principles of Kanguka. The first principle is to accept the will of God even if it's different from our own will. The second is to pray every day. And the third is forbidden to complain. Instead, we must give thanks in everything. Today, I'm going to talk about the second principle which is to pray every day. All of you who are listening to me know that prayer is very important for a child of God. It's through prayer that you are able to have a relationship with God your creator. But I want you to get a new understanding about prayer. Today, I want you to understand that prayer is a sacrifice. If you don't understand this, you will only pray from time to time. You won't be able to apply the second guide principle of Kanguka which says that we need to pray every day. In the same way that you eat or breathe every day, you should also pray every day because prayer is life. It's prayer that activates the hand of I am in your life. Prayer destroys the plans of the enemy or Satan. Prayer strengthens our hands and souls and spirits. We can't do anything without prayer. Prayer is victory for the child of God. A Christian who doesn't pray is a defeated Christian. You need need to understand this. Prayer enables us to overcome all the tribulations that Satan brings into our lives. But I want you to understand that prayer is also a sacrifice that you offer to God. You should always be ready and you should know that prayer will not always be pleasing to you. I often hear people say, today I want to pray. I want to go to an all night prayer meeting. I really want it. But there are times when you don't feel like praying. You may have the desire to pray in your heart, but you your flesh doesn't want to pray. Sometimes you want to pray but you just can't do it. Maybe you slept late or your flesh is weak and you don't feel like waking up. This can happen many times but I keep reminding you in this broadcast that you don't need to feel like praying. Your flesh doesn't need to be pleased about it. You just need to know that prayer is something that you must do. The word of God says in Romans chapter 12 verse 1 that we must offer our bodies as living sacrifices which are pleasing to God. If you don't understand that prayer is a sacrifice, then sometimes you won't pray. Whenever you feel tired, you won't pray. Whenever you're not happy, you won't pray. But you need to understand that prayer is a sacrifice that you must offer no matter how you feel. Prayer is like an open door to heaven that allows you to receive what God has prepared in heaven for your life. If you are a Christian who doesn't pray, it means that you are a Christian who has shut the door to heaven. I want every listener of Kango cut to understand this. If you don't understand this, you will only pray from time to time or you won't even pray at all. On Wednesdays, I often teach you about preparing the day through prayer. Prayer is life. Whether you feel like it or not, you need to pray. If you're joyful, you need to pray. If you're angry, you need to pray. If you're discouraged, you need to pray. You may not pray with the same intensity you had yesterday, but you need to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to understand that whenever you don't feel like praying, whenever you don't feel like waking up, it's actually the best moment to pray because the 
prayer you are going to make will be a great sacrifice which has a lot of value. People usually like to offer cheap things that didn't cost much to them, things that didn't require much effort or sacrifices. But even if you don't feel like praying, you need to know that you must pray at all times. You must pray whether you feel like it or not because prayer is life and prayer opens the door to heaven. Now in the second part of the broadcast and we're going to continue our study of the books of Samuel. This study started on June 13th and it will come to an end this Friday. I hope that you've read the remaining chapters of 2 Samuel. As I told you before, I won't spend a lot of time on some chapters. That's why it's important to read all the chapters on your own. Last Friday, we were looking at chapter 13 and I was talking about the consequences of sin. Remember that when David committed the sin of adultery. God told him that he was going to expose publicly what David did in secret. It means that David committed adultery in secret, but his sin had consequences that everyone could see. For example, one of the consequences of the sexual immorality of David is the fact that his son Amnon lasted after his own sister. Last Friday, I told you that there are some sins which affect some families from generation to generation. And if you are saved, you need to break those chains. I've thought about this in the past and I told you that we need to break all the generational curses in our families. There are some bad things that you just inherit when you are born and they affect you but you can break those chains. Sin has consequences and it can affect your children too. But if you believe in Jesus Christ, those chains can be broken in the name of Jesus. So on Friday, I was talking about Amnon and we saw that he raped his own sister. If you go further down in 2 Samuel chapter 13 you can see that verse 18 talks about Absalom who was a half-brother of Amnon. They were both sons of David but they didn't have the same mother. But Absalom and Tamar had the same father and mother. And Absalom got very angry when he learned that his sister was raped by Amnon and he wanted to avenge her. That's why he made plans to kill his brother Amnon. You can read about this in verse 28. You can see that Absalom was able to kill Amnon. This shows once again that sin has very bad consequences. These days, people are no longer afraid to sin because they don't see the consequences of their sins as it was the case in the Old Testament. But let me tell you that even though we are not in the Old Testament, sin still has consequences whether you see them or not. I will say it again, sin always has consequences in your life whether you see them or not. The problem that many people have is that when they are facing the consequences of their sins, they don't realize that those are the consequences of their sins. That's why they don't fear God and they don't fear sin and they keep sinning as much as they want. But whenever you sin, there are consequences and that's still the case even today in the new covenant. Whether you see them or not, sin has consequences. Some consequences of sin can be seen by everyone, but there are other consequences that can be seen. These are spiritual consequences. There are things that are happening in your life as a result of of your sins but you don't realize it or you may be facing some problems as a result of the sins of your parents or your grandparents so as you are praying you need to break all the generational curses in your family so they won't affect you and you can be able to walk according to the promise you have in Jesus Christ and if you have children you should pray for them every day so we can see that David sin opened the door to the spirit of sexual immorality which made the way for the spirit of murder. The spirit of sexual immorality and the spirit of murder came into David's family because David had committed those two sins. David committed sexual immorality with a woman and then he killed the husband of the woman. So after Absalom killed his brother, he fled. I hope that you've already read all the story. In chapter 14, we read about Joab. He was one of the top military commanders and David would give him the most important missions. So Joab was able to bring Absalom back to Jerusalem. Absalom had fled after he killed his brother and he spent three 
years in another city. Joab went to seek him and he brought him back to Jerusalem. But he spent two years in Jerusalem without seeing his father David. He was afraid of him and he didn't know what he would do to him. But at the end of chapter 14, you can see that David and Absalom were reconciled. We will see in the next chapters that David had the heart of Christ. He had a merciful and forgiving heart. God willing, we continue tomorrow. May I am bless you. I wish you all a great day. If you want to repent or you're transformed by these teachings, you can contact us by sharing your testimony in order to edify other listeners by contacting us on plus 256-781-377-337.